Hi, and thanks for joining. Today's video is a special request from a viewer, and it's going to be a listing video. I have picked three various items to list, and I'm going to walk you through how to list those items. I'm going to show you different ways to list items on eBay, and I'm going to show you our preferred way and explain why that's our preferred way. I'm going to show you how we generate a listing, how we comp and research items, how we take pictures, and all of the details that go into listing an item. I will quickly say that there really is no right way to list an item. There really is no right way to resell on eBay. So if you do things differently, or if you have a different way that you prefer to do things, that's okay. Keep doing it the way that you like to do it. I just wanna show you the way that we do it Hopefully you can get some information out of it, or maybe you can teach me something. So if you do things differently and want to share that in the comments below, please do that. All right, well, let's dive in. Okay, the first thing that we're going to list is this pillow sham. This is an item that was gifted to us to resell by a family member. They actually purchased a big bulk lot of different home decor items, including a lot of pillow shams that were purchased from a sample sale. And so I have been listing a bunch of these over the last couple of days, and I've kind of got a listing template down for these. So I'm gonna use an existing listing of mine to start this. This one actually has a tag on it. The other ones that I was listing didn't. So I was listing them as new without tags. This one actually does have a hang tag on it. So I will list this one as new with tags, but it has a price, which is the wholesale price on it. I'm actually gonna mark that out. So let me grab a marker real quick. The other thing that this one has that the other Pillow Shams did not have is what appears to be an item number. So I'm going to search that online really quick and see if I can find the actual item. I'm just going to actually go to Google and search in the brand name of this, which is CNF Home. And then I'm going to enter in that style number that's listed on here and hopefully it'll come up. If not, I'm going to use Google Lens to search this, this item and see if I can find the style name. Okay, yeah, that didn't work at all. <laughs> so I'm actually going to use my phone to take a picture of this with Google Lens. And if you have not used Google Lens before, you just need to download the Google app onto your phone. I'll show you guys a screen recording of my phone real quick of what that looks like. I'm on an iPhone, so if you have an Android device, it might look different. But then you go and open the Google app and there is a camera on the search bar. You click that camera and you can search for an item by photo. So that's what I'm going to do with this and hopefully I can find the style name of this pillow sham. Okay, it did not come up when I first searched it. So I am going to add a filter or an additional search feature to that and add in CNF home and see if that will find it. And it is not, well, wait a second, here's something that looks similar to it. It says forest. That may or may not be it. I don't think it is. Here's one that looks like it. Here it is. I think I found it. No, I don't think I did. Boy, they have a lot. This brand has a lot of stuff that looks very similar to one another. Okay, so I was unsuccessful in finding the exact pattern name of this particular pillow sham. So I'm now going to search using description words in both Google and eBay and see if I can find it. I'm actually not very hopeful that I will. So if I don't, I'm just going to use, you know, some good keywords in my title and see if I can, you know, describe it that way. Let's get started. So it is like a patchwork pillowcase. I'm going to describe it as green and red or green and maroon. Let's see what we can find. Okay, so no luck on Google. Let's try on eBay. Oh, 
Okay, no luck there either. So I'm just gonna have to use keywords to describe this one. And I know from pricing previous ones that I've listed that I have listed those at $19.99 for single pillow shams. So that's how I'm gonna list this one. So I am going to go into my drafts because I already have another pillow sham draft in there and I'm just gonna copy that draft. And then I'm gonna use that copy draft as my starting point. So pretty much all of this title is going to stay the same except for the keywords at the end, which I'm gonna to change to patchwork red green. And I think I'm gonna add the word rustic or cabin or something like that because that's kind of the feeling that it gives me. So I'm gonna see if rustic will fit and it does. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I went with the title of single CNF home 20 by 26. So I included the size standard. It's also a standard size pillow sham quilted pillow sham patchwork red green rustic. So that gives all the information that you need right there in the title. I'm actually gonna copy that. And I know that this is gonna go into our bin E3 because we still have room in that one, so I'm gonna leave that the same. All of this is gonna stay the same from the previous listing. I do need to change some of my item specifics here. So I'm gonna change this. The primary color I would say on this is green because it has a green border on it. So I'm gonna change that to green. I would say the style is, let's see if they, yes, they have a rustic option. So I'm gonna choose that. And I think the rest of that can stay the same. I am gonna change this from new without tags to new with tags. So actually that removes my item description. So I don't have to worry about that. And then I'm going to paste that title that I had copied from earlier into my description box here. I'm gonna leave my price at $19.99 because that is what I had decided the price for these was the best at. And I'm gonna promote this at a rate of 4%. That's typically what we start most listings at unless it's an item that has a really excellent sell-through rate and we feel like it doesn't need to be promoted. 4% is where we generally start our items. There's also no right way to do that, so don't feel like that's the right way to do it because it definitely isn't. You do what feels right to you. And then I am going to save this for later because we're gonna go in and add pictures at a later time. Now I'm gonna take this item over to our photo station and have that waiting for Kevin. Okay, the next item I have is from a recent trip to the Goodwill bins. There will be a video from that trip coming out soon, but this is one of the items that we got from that trip. It is some Microsoft front page software and it's in the case and has all of the liner notes and the disc is in good condition and everything. So I will go ahead and look this up. I'm actually going to list this using a different method. I'm gonna list this probably using the method that most people use and probably using the method that is the eBay recommended method. This is not actually the way that we typically list and I'll explain why as I'm going through, but I do want to give you guys the option and show you how to list this way if in the event that you haven't ever listed anything before and just show you the different ways that there are to list on eBay. Um, this also does have the product key on the back of the disc case, so that is also helpful. All right, so I am going to go to create listing, which is right here. There's many different places where you can find it, but this is one of them. So I'm gonna click on create listing and it says, tell us what you're selling. Okay, so I've typed in Microsoft front page 2000 software. I'm gonna click search. I'm gonna see what comes up. 
And at this point, it brings up existing listings. So you can scroll through those and you can find a match and you can start with somebody else's listing to create your, your own listing. And a lot of people do that. They prefer to do that. It creates a starting point. They feel like, why reinvent the wheel? The reason why I don't like to do that is because I have not personally done that research myself. I haven't entered in any of that information. I don't wanna assume that someone else has entered in everything correctly. And if they haven't entered in everything correctly, then I am copying everything that they've entered in correctly. And I'm just copying that into my listing and then my listing will be incorrect. And you would presumably look at multiple different listings that people have copied from the same listing over and over and over again that you might think is correct because many listings have gotten copied time and time again. And so you might think, oh, well, that must be right. But actually, it's just that one person made a mistake and then multiple people copied them. So my preference is to start from scratch and do the research myself because then I feel more confident that it's right. So I know it does take more time to do it that way, but that's my preferred way to do it. I guess I'm a little bit of a control freak in that way. I just want to know that the information is right and I'm not relying on somebody else to have done it and then possibly that they did it incorrectly. So I'm not gonna select any of those. I'm going to continue without match. Then it all asks me to select the condition of my item and I'm going to, I'm gonna look at this a little bit more carefully, make a decision. I mean, honestly, it looks really good. I'm going to say very good because that's my opinion of it. The disc looks like it's hardly been touched. At this point, it just brings up the same listing draft that we were looking at earlier. It's just completely blank, nothing's been filled in. So it has copied the search information that we entered earlier that says Microsoft Front Page 2000 Software. So I am going to leave that there. I'm actually going to copy that and I'm gonna to go to a different tab that I have open in eBay and I'm gonna search for that. That's gonna allow me to see how other people did their titles and it's also gonna allow me to see how other people did their pricing. So I'm not really seeing anything exactly like what I have quite yet. Here's one. This is an academic version though and it says two disc set. So I'm actually gonna open that and see what the other disc is that it says it has with it. I wanna make sure mine is complete. Mine does say, oh, you know what? Mine says two CD. See, this is another reason why I go in and do all of this detailed looking because I just wanna make sure that I'm catching all of these little details. But there it is. I just found it. Look, it opens like that. Two CD. See, you know what? I would not have known that had I not looked at the listings in this way. So that's why I do that. So now I'm going to see. Yes, we have both discs. I'm going to check the condition of this other disc. And it looks just as good. Doesn't look like it's been touched. Here's some that are sort of similar, but still not exactly the same. Here's one that looks very similar. It says new other. That disc looks different than mine. So I'm gonna keep looking because I wanna find the exact same thing if I can. These say upgrade install, and I'm not sure why, because I don't see that this one says that it's an upgrade. I'm not sure where they're getting that information. Oh, it's on the disc. Okay. And the one that I have is not an upgrade. So that is definitely going to affect the price because I think what I have is the full program, not just an upgrade. Okay. Here's one that appears to be the exact same. It looks like it is. And they have theirs listed at $50 or best offer. 
with free shipping. So, so far that's my, my only comp. <laughs> I'm going to keep looking. Here's another one. Let's look at this one. That one's an upgrade. Here's one that says full version. This one says full version in the title. That made it really easy for me to spot what I was looking for. And so that tells me that is probably something I want to put in my title. So before I forget that, I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to put those words in my title. I don't know that I'm going to leave them there exactly, but I know that I want to include those words in my title because that helps me spot that listing immediately. Okay, well, the disc that on theirs look different than mine, but it does say full version. So I'm going to look at my discs again. I'm going to make sure that they don't say upgrade anywhere. And I don't see that they do, but I do see that they say SR-1 on them. So I think I want that in my title. So I'm going to put that before I forget it. And I'm going to keep looking. And y'all, this does take a long time. I mean, it takes me a long time to comp things because I want to be very, very careful. I'll clean up my title later, but I want to put all the information that I'm finding doing my research. That is another reason why I don't copy from an existing listing, because I might have ended up saying that it was a 2002 or, you know, a 1997 or something when, I mean, obviously I don't want to copy from that listing and get the specs from a different product. And then I might've updated my title, but it wasn't going to update the specs. So this is why I do it the way that I do it. It's harder. It is not the easiest and fastest way always, I think it is much more accurate. Okay, now I'm going into sold and completed listings and I'm gonna see if I can find anything that matches exactly. Okay, this one seems really similar. This one seems like it's it. And it recently sold for $16 plus $4 shipping. So very far off from that one that was listed for $50. So this one's a little bit more probably in keeping with what I'll list for. Okay, so I do not have a fantastic comp at this point. I have comps that are all over the place. I may be able to get more than $20 for it. Somebody else has it listed for 50 currently. I'm actually going to put a few more keywords into my search and see if I can narrow it down a little bit. And if I can't, I'm going to maybe split the difference between that $50 one and that $20 sold. I'm adding full version. I'm going to see what that finds. Okay, so I really didn't find anything else. I think I'm stuck with the comps that I found. And based on that, I think I'm going to list the item at $29.99 with best offer turned on. I don't want to sit on this item forever because I don't think it really has tons of value. I mean, it is old software and I don't know that it really would sell for $50. I think that is kind of a random outlier that somebody has it listed for that much and I want mine to sell. So I'm going to list it at $29.99, free shipping with best offer turned on. I'm going to go back into my drafts or into my listing, and I'm going to clean up that title a little bit based on the information that I saw on other people's listing. I want to make sure mine stands out and mine has the proper search features that people who are looking for this are looking for. So I've got, I currently have 2,000 in there twice. So I'm going to take this second one out. I'm going to put 2,000 at the beginning. So it's going to say 2000 Microsoft front page. I'm going to put CD-ROM software full version. It says SR-1 with product key. I only have six characters left, so I think I'm going to put excellent used condition. So I'm going to copy that. Okay, so now that we have decided on our title, I'm going to go in and I'm going to complete the rest of the listing. And this is one that we started from create listings, so nothing is populated in here. So under a custom label, we are going to put this on our media shelf. So I'm going to enter that. I am going to go in to the item category and put um, software. See what comes up. Hmm. So many choices here. Let's see what other people used. 
There's many options that will work. It says web and desktop publishing on that one. Web and desktop publishing. Looks like that's the most popular one is web and desktop publishing for the choice. So I'm gonna actually type in web and desktop publishing and find that. All right, I selected that and I chose that category based on the other front pages that had sold or were listed. And oddly, when I typed in software, that didn't even come up as an option. I, honestly, I really do not like the way the item category search works, works anymore because you can't see the, the tree. I, I don't know if that's the, the right word, but you can't see all of the other categories that are within that section anymore like you used to be able to, and you can only find stuff through search. So I find that it is less functional than it used to be, but it's the only option we have. So a lot of times if I can't decide exactly what category to put it in, I do look at listings that I've sold or listings that are currently listed to see exactly what category they have them in. Okay, so under my store category, I'm probably gonna put this under, um, let's see, I'll probably put it under office supplies. I have an office supplies or a computer. I don't know, it could go under either. I think I'm gonna do office supplies because my computer category is under electronics. I don't know, honestly, this is, a, this is six of one, half a dozen of another. I'm going with office supplies. Okay, I'm selecting desktop publishing. It says for operating systems, I'm gonna refer to the case on that. It was good for Windows. 95, Windows 98, Windows NT. And Windows 2000 Professional. So I'm selecting all of those. Under format, I'm going to select CD and a lot of people don't fill out the additional, they only fill out the required item specifics. I always fill out all of the possible item specifics. And that's because we know that eBay does actually pull from these with searches. And actually Rachel Strickland did a video on this recently showing how she tested out this. And so if you haven't checked out that video, I would recommend that you go check it out. But we know for sure that eBay is using these item specifics for searching, and so it is worth your time to actually fill them out. Okay, so under license category, I'm not sure what that is, so I'm gonna leave it blank. Okay, I'm gonna select that it's English. The manufacturer part number, I'm actually gonna put this down right here, that it's on here, X06-13284. All right, under item condition, I had selected very good. I still agree with that. This is pre-populated when we do copy draft, so I don't ever have to enter this, but on here I'm going to put excellent pre-owned condition. Please carefully inspect photos for full condition and item details. Then I copy the title into the description. And I usually copy the item condition into the description as well. Then I'm gonna think about, is there anything else that the buyer needs to know? And I think that we've pretty much covered everything. They have all the information that they need. So I decided that my price was $29.99 free shipping. So I'm gonna enter that. I always click outside of that field because if I don't, sometimes it changes the price on me. So I am going to go down here. I'm going with free shipping. We have already decided that. I also decided that I was gonna have offers on. So that is already toggled on. I'm going to do my listing ad rate, my promoted rate at 4%. And my payment policy selected is my eBay payments immediate pay. So then I'm gonna save this one for later. 
that's putting it in my drafts and I'm going to put this aside for Kevin to take pictures. Okay, now the third thing that we're going to list is one more item that we got from the Goodwill bins. The day that we went, this is an item that came out of their retail store that they weren't able to sell. Uh, Kevin already tore the price tag off, so I don't remember how much it was, but I'm going to see if I can get the rest of the price tag off. And I'm going to use this handy dandy little scraper that we got from Amazon and I'll link it in the description box below if you need something like this. This is very helpful to get price tags off. Those Goodwill price tags though are like the worst price tags known to man. At least the one from our Goodwills are the worst. They are so hard to get off. So I'm just going to do the best that I can do. Okay, so I've pretty much gotten it off. It's not perfect, but this item has a barcode on the back of it. And so I'm actually going to use my phone to search for this item through eBay with the barcode because that's the easiest thing to do. Okay, so I'm going to open the eBay app. I'm going to go to search, click on the photo, and then you just hold it over the barcode and it will search for the item for you. So this is showing me items that are already listed or, or that are actively listed, not list items that have sold. And I, I want to look for only new items because this is brand new in the box. So I do want to filter this by condition, new. And let's see. There's an open box one. I mean, technically this is not open box. Both of these are really listed for around $30 best offer, free shipping, if you're, because we would use the free shipping model. So I'm considering that the total price of these, $30 free shipping, best offer. Really all of these, except for that fourth one, fifth one. The top four are listed at $30 free shipping, best offer. If you consider the all in price. Now I'm going to filter it by completed and sold items. And this, there's only one, I'm going to turn off uh, condition. Okay, there's still only one sold. It sold for $20 plus $16.45 shipping. So I feel like $29.99 free shipping, best offers is probably the most. I'm actually going to do $32.99 free shipping, best offers because I'm competing with a lot of different prices and I know that I'll give somebody a good deal if they come along and watch my item. So I'm going to create my listing. This one, I'm going to do that by copying a draft and I actually already have one copied in here. We have one called listing draft, <laughs> very clever name. And we just copy that one over and over again. And that's how we start our listings. This is really our preferred way to do it. And I'll explain why as I'm going through. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to open the oldest one and I'm going to come down to the title. And like I said, I know I don't usually start with somebody's listing. I usually start with my product and start entering the information. Then I go to other people's listings and look and see what is my listing missing. So I'm going to type in the brand name, which is 3M. Oops, not hashtag M, it's 3M. So it says 3M gel wrist rest. So I'm going to type that for keyboard and mouse. And it says the size is 25 inches by two and a half inches. So I'm going to include that. And it's black. So I'm going to include that. Then on the back, it does have a product number, which I'm going to include WR340LE and it's new in package. And then I always include the word new. So I still have nine characters left. So I'm actually going to copy that. I'm going to go into my extra eBay window here and search and see what other people have. 
So other people have another measurement, which is 0 0.75. Oh yeah, that is on here. So I'm gonna include that. I guess that's the depth. So I'm gonna add that 0 0.75 inches. That leaves me with three characters, which is not much. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to add anything, but I'm just gonna scan through the other listings and see if you know I wanna switch anything up, if there's anything that I'm missing that I think one thing would be better for another, replace a word or two, or just leave it at it as is. Okay, so I actually feel pretty confident with the title that I've given it. I've compared it to existing listings. I looked at the listings on my phone and I feel like my title says everything it needs to say. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish out that listing. So I'm gonna copy the item title again because I did add something to it and I'm gonna do my location. And I know that I'm gonna put this in poster bin A. We have poster bins for literally for posters, but this is the perfect item to just slide right in one of those poster slots. So that's where we're gonna put that. So I'm gonna say poster bin A. So under item category, I'm going to actually put down wrist rest keyboard, and I'm just gonna see what comes up. So it immediately gives me a category of mouse pads and wrist rests. So I am going to select that because I think it's applicable. And this is also going to go in the office supply category. So under my store categories. So I'm going to select that. Brand it under the brand. It's going to be 3M. Under the type, it's going to be wrist rest for keyboard. The UPC, we actually do have a UPC, so I'm gonna enter that. That's this information right here and the numbers underneath the barcode. So I'm gonna enter those numbers. And typically, unless it's a book or some kind of media, it doesn't pull up anything for this, but I like to enter it anyway because you never know what somebody is using for the search. So I've entered it and it didn't pull up any specs, but I've got it entered and I'm not gonna take it out. Okay, so under features, this is probably a category that eBay uses for search, so I'm definitely gonna enter in as many as I can here. So it is non-slip, I would say. I don't know that it says that, but I feel like it definitely is. So I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put gaming because it would be appropriate to use for gaming and we want anybody who's searching for that to look at my product. It is large, so I'm gonna add that. And stain resistant, it doesn't really say that, and I don't know what constitutes stain resistant, so I am hesitant to put that one. So I'm not gonna select that. Design, I'm just gonna select plain. Cause you never know, somebody might search for plain wrist rest and mine would come up theoretically if eBay uses that item specific for a search keyword. Okay, under manufacturer's part number, that's that number that is above the barcode. I'm actually gonna enter that here. Under material, I'm gonna put gel. I'm not gonna select anything for that because I don't think it's applicable. Some people may, or I don't know if this, this search works. I don't know if this, um, if the, where it's manufactured, people search for that, but I am gonna enter it if I can find the information easily. I can't fi easily find that information, so I'm just gonna leave it blank. Um, item height, I do have that information. It is 0.75 inches. Item length was 25 inches. And item width was 2.5 inches. Okay, and I don't know what the warranty is. I'm not sure I have that information or if it has a warranty. Under item condition, we're gonna select new. I am going to paste the title here. I'm gonna take off excellent used condition. This is one of the benefits. Actually, I'm gonna switch, switch this back to used really quick. This is one of the benefits of doing this with a draft or you could even use the, the templates, which is not something that we typically use, but there is an option to create a listing template and you can work from those. But this is one of the benefits from doing it from drafts is this condition description 
we include we have um, included that information and we just copy it over and over again and so this is pre-populated into our listing and i don't have to retype that every single time so obviously that's not applicable in this particular listing since this is a new item so i want to change that to new and that's going to take that off and it's also pre-populated in my item description. So I do want to take off excellent used preempt condition, but I'm still going to keep all of that other information. It is important. And I also want to add on here that box may have shelf wear because it's not perfect. I mean, it was bumping around in the Goodwill bins a little bit, and I don't want somebody to think that they're going to get a perfect box. It also has that sticker residue on it. so. We're gonna include that information. Okay, we had decided on $32.99. So I enter that price, click outside of the box. We decided that we we're gonna have offers on, so I've got that selected. We decided on free shipping, so I've got that policy selected. And we are going to do a promoted listing rate of 4%, which is our standard. This didn't have a fantastic sell through, so we definitely wanna promote this item. And we're gonna do our standard payment policy, immediate pay. And I'm gonna save this for later and put it over with Kevin's stuff to list. And that's pretty much it. And I'm also gonna show you guys how Kevin does his photos. We have a really small little photo studio. It is not perfect by any means. We, do not, we are not working with a lot of space, but he will walk you through how he does photos, how we enter photos into the listings, and then how we go live with the listings. So this is the setup. She makes the listing. She sets the stuff over here near my workstation. And then I know it's time for me to do my job. So I'm going to go into drafts, find what I'm looking for, this pillow sham. I normally open it up first, then I go to my camera. Let's see. So I've been doing a lot of these pillow shams. I know how to take photos of these. So for the uh, main shot, I like to do, since it's a pillow sham, I like to spread it out horizontally. And I see a string here, so I'm going to snip. You know, tidy up your items if they have little stray hairs or whatever. All right, I'm going to get it in there centered, get my shot, crop it down to a reasonable size. Get it in there. So I like to go ahead and adjust my photos as I go. I turn the brightness and the color up a little bit. All right. For the back shot, it's just gonna be a, a vertical because vertical is easier to take. And it's just the back, so it doesn't really matter. Same deal. Do my adjustments. I like to do them as I go, that way I don't have to remember to come back and do it. And then on this one, it'll have a tag. I'm gonna show the tag because it shows what the contents are and what the size is. And then I'll flip this over so you can see the washing specs. And that's it for that one. That's all I gotta do. And then just fold it and put it away. So let me finish. I don't want my finger in there anywhere. All the materials, okay. Open it up. Put my photos in. Done. And when you add photos, you don't have to actually save it. You can just close it. I just want to see where this is going. It's going in E3. Make sure the price looks right. And close it and then that'll stay in drafts and then Wendy will go back in, double check everything, price, pictures, and then she'll list it. That's our uh, safety net. All right, what's next? Well, these are easy ones. Boy, these are easy pictures today. So this front page, I'm just going to make sure I'm going to glare on that photo from the lights. I take one of the front. There's two discs in there. There is? Yep, I almost missed it. Huh. Well, then normally I would just take a picture of it in the case. Oh, it's in the back? Oh, well then, 
First, I will take a picture of, of the disc, and then I will take a picture of the second one so that they can see that it has both discs. Whoops. It's a cool disc. It's like, no, it's genuine. <laughs> Uh, and then I'm not going to take a picture of the back because it has the product key on it. Yeah. And you want to make sure that if you ever have one that has a product key, you don't take a picture of that because someone else can use that product key. So this one will be a simple crop. I'll lighten it up a little bit. Just like normal. Lighten it up. So I just like to center it up in there. I like to get it as tight as possible because that way you get to see the most of the product that you can. Some people put a lot of white space around. I don't like that. All right, front page, go into my listing. Boop, 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 simple. Wait for it to load all the photos and check media shelf. Price looks right, done. And this is nice because it's new. I don't have to take it out of the packaging. I'm gonna do this at an angle because it'll look better. Mm. Trying to cover up the damage on my photo board as much as possible. Okay, it's probably good. Same thing, just take a nice, make sure you get it, all the glare off of it that you can. And then I, I really like to uh, maximize my space, so I'll diagonal turn it to where I can get the most out of it. And then on this one, I'll do the auto settings because of what it is. Anything with colors, like bright colors, sometimes the auto setting works better. All right. Um, get all the glare off that I can. Problem with our lights, they're very bright and they're right above it, so you have to kind of work around where you can. If it has a little glare, it won't hurt anything. Okay. Same thing, get as much as I can in there because it's diagonal. Auto color it, turn it up a little bit, and then that's it. That's all you can do really on this one. I mean, I could take a close up of, sometimes I'll do like this as a little extra shot so you can see what it is, just as a bonus shot. But pretty much if they're buying this, they know what it is. And go into here. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, there they go. And that's it, that was easy. And that's it. That is how we create listings. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please let us know by hitting the like button. And if you're not already subscribed to our channel, consider hitting that subscribe button with the notification bell on so you can be kept informed of all of our future content. Thanks again for joining and we will catch you guys on the flip side.